Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where I cover nostalgic, obscure, otherwise strange content. Today is a very special video because I'm joined once again by my friend and frequent collaborator, Anton Wong. He contacted me last week about doing this video on Wendy Wu Homecoming Warrior. Hey guys, I'm back. I wanted to cover this movie specifically because it's around the time of Mid-Autumn Festival, which is a big festival in Chinese and East Asian culture. It is also around the same time that Wendy Wu Homecoming Warrior takes place. Now, I will be giving some commentary about about the cultural context of the different characters and the plot points, as well as the making of the film. Now, growing up Chinese North American, I can kind of relate to Wendy Wu's character, um, and I remember watching it as a little kid relating to her then. Um, I actually also studied martial arts for many years as a kid, uh, mostly two Filipino ones called Mano Mano and another one called Sikaran. Um, but Let's get into the movie. So the movie starts out in China with these Buddhist monks. This is one of our main characters, Shen. Okay, here we see them posing in different animal fighting styles, which each casts a shadow. Um, they're five shadowing of what's to come, if you will. <laughs> you know, I wish they didn't have to cut so much between all the different angles, because it would have been cool to see it more from one angle just to know what's going on but I suppose it's to get a sense of, you know, what's happening later on in the movie. I don't, I don't know. Look at that shot that he made right into that teacup, man. Yeah, geez, what a jerk. <laughs> I'm not a historian on how Mongolian Buddhist monasteries work, but I'm pretty sure that, you know, he would have been stopped, like the fight would have stopped and he would have gotten in trouble or something. It is time. And then these guys come in and kind of kill the vibe by being like, hey, you know that whole end of the world thing? Uh, that quest that you have to go on. Yeah, that's happening. We're sorry, man. The evil Yano has awakened. They sent him to California to find Brenda Song's character. If you know this movie, you know that Brenda Song is the lead. As we speak, she's failing out of history class. Wendy. Wendy. Bueller. 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 But aside from struggling in school, Wendy is super popular. She's running for homecoming queen, hence the name of the movie. Why? Please get it together. She's sensitively consoling her friend through a breakup. She has a boyfriend, apparently. And your boyfriend's perfect. No, he's not. I got a salad, Wayne. You don't need it, but I'm trying to cut my triceps. Well, if she doesn't need it, don't make her eat the salad. Maybe she didn't want a salad. Austin. I'm pretty sure that's his name. If not, he gives off big Austin energy anyway, so he's Austin now. So apparently this was actually shot in Auckland, and there was a whole bunch of extras uh, from the drama students uh, from the secondary school that this was shot at. So, you know, you see the extras in the background. That's just a bunch of high school kids. Her arch rival is also running for homecoming queen and she's handing out cookies and her brother takes a cookie, which is fraternizing with the enemy, I guess. So she takes a very similar shot as Shen did with the teacup and just ends that cookie. Oh my goodness. A little loyalty here. Fine, I hate raisins anyway. Ew, they're raisin cookies? She should lose homecoming queen just for that. I hate raisins anyway. Hey, Hey, little Good. sis, you might want to check on your loyalty over there. Okay, yeah, they definitely ADR'd this scene and some of those lines because their lips are barely moving. Want one of my cookies? Yeah, sure. <laughs> See, I told you, big Austin energy. She goes to her mom's work to complain. Her mom is a museum curator getting ready for a exhibit on ancient Chinese culture. She almost breaks this priceless face but does a very accurate kick to that box and all is well. Okay, I understand the take your kid to work day thing, but this girl is gonna break something. The museum director is counting on me to put together this exhibit of ancient Chinese artifacts, and I'm getting stressed out because I don't know the history behind any of them. Yeah, same. Yeah, I'm a Chinese Canadian now trying to explain cultural context that I might not even know that much about. Uh, what have I gotten myself into? You know, I used to think my mother's stories about the Buddhist legends were so silly. Should have listened to her more. Her mom's struggling to get all the information together and the exhibit is only opening a couple weeks away, so she's stressed. She kind of tells Wendy that she needs to take responsibility of things herself. Good thing your brother is such a messy eater. A poor cupcake would have starved. Cupcake. And the name of her own dog gives her the idea to make cupcakes to bribe everybody for votes, because that's better than raisin cookies. Wait, so does she forget to feed the dog and then nobody ever, like, remembers for her and feeds the dog themselves? 
Poor Cupcake. But anyway, she runs off, almost breaks another priceless artifact. It's very stressful. <laughs> Meanwhile, poor Shen is just walking down the street. I guess they didn't even like pay for his bus fare or whatever. He has to hitchhike. Look at him riding on the top of that bus. Ugh. Wendy's dad is trying to be a helpful dad as best he can. Wendy who? Wendy Wu for homecoming queen. I don't know, I kind of like it, it's catchy. And that's the legendary Tsai Chin, or Zhou Tsai Chin, I believe, of the Joy Luck Club, a uh, former Bond girl and Aquafina's grandma in Shang-Chi. The doctor was really her son. The grandma's watching soap operas. I love the grandma. Why don't you watch American soap operas so that we can all understand? I do. The Spanish ones. Spanish soap operas are really entertaining, though. It's not like I missed having that Chinese culture in my life. Just because you don't miss it doesn't mean it is missing. Yo, straight bars from Grandma Wu here. Back at the museum, this mysterious box gets dropped off. Something for this Chinese thing they're doing here. Okay, that dude just straight up knocked on that box like that. Every other artifact was in a protective box of some sort. Does this one not get one? Is it because it's already in a box of some kind? Like, I, I don't work in logistics, but I'm pretty sure you, you gotta protect something precious like that from someone's just, like, Cheeto dust fingers or something, you know? Wendy has been left to clean up her cupcake mess on her own. And then the doorbell rings. Um, may I help you? Okay, so I think that this dude, Shen, uh, real name Shin Koyamada, I believe, uh, actually did most of the stunts himself. Uh, he studied various martial arts uh, since he was young, so I think they just straight up used him in a lot of the action scenes for a lot of these stunts. Um, and you can actually see his face. Also, back then, 2005, the face replacement technology was just not that great. So it's probably him. And Brenda Song actually got this role because she, in part, because she was already a black belt in Taekwondo. And I'll talk more about that later. It is your time again. Right. It's Shen, but obviously, like, if a random guy that you don't know shows up to your front door in the middle of the night and tells you that you're an ancient warrior, you're not really gonna believe him. So she doesn't. Goodbye. Uh, but he zips into the house before she can close the door like a vampire. And even though Wendy is never trained in martial arts, she easily kicks his ass out of the house. Meanwhile, the security guard hears a strange noise. There's like this glowing green light coming from the box. Museum security. It's adorable that he has pepper spray that is not gonna help him at all. <laughs> and he gets possessed by an ancient spirit occupational hazard, I suppose. But then Wendy's brother, who I guess is a pizza delivery guy, he shows up to deliver pizza to the security guard. And the evil spirit realizes that Wendy is his sister and therefore now knows that they live at the same residence. And then the spirit jumps from the security guard to the brother. So now the brother is possessed. Yeah, quick, close that door before he demands payment. Wendy freaks out because her arch rival is on the news as a guest broadcaster for some reason. Check out one of my Jessica for homecoming queen cupcakes tomorrow. But by the time the possessed brother gets home, she's asleep on the couch. Shen, who's just been camping out outside on the front porch, sees him go in, knows something's wrong, and climbs in through a window. Ah, there's some of that beloved wuxia physics, um, you know, kind of like hero, folk hero stories. Uh, it was a, quite a common style of, uh, in, in Hong Kong martial arts cinema in the late uh, 20th century. You might recognize it from films like uh, Hero or uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. He tries to repel the spirit because uh, the spirit is trying to like drain Wendy's energy away because she is an ancient warrior. They have this martial arts fight, which actually incorporates some interesting choreography and wire work, in my opinion. I'm, I'm so fascinated by wire work. I've always wanted to do it. <laughs> no, no, oh. I love that the safety and well-being of the fish is what stops him in his tracks. Bless him. All of this happens while Wendy's still asleep. Shen manages to what he thinks is just repel the spirit out of the brother. 
but what he doesn't realize is that it jumps from the brother to the dog. So now the poor dog is possessed. Poor little beanie baby. The dog didn't do anything to you. Neither did anybody else, but there's just a special place in my heart for pets. I'm home? Cool. But the brother just wakes up and is like, oh, I'm home now. The last thing I remember is delivering a pizza and then goes to bed. You know, most people hide in like a, a closet or like behind a, a couch or something, but not my boy Shen. The mom is explaining to dad the history of the terracotta warriors. They're terracotta warriors. There were 6,000 of them buried in the tomb of the first emperor of China in 210 BC. The people believe they would guard him in the afterlife. Okay, that's actually true. Uh, Qin Shi Huang Di, uh, I believe that's how you'd say his name, uh, was actually uh, built the Great Wall of China too. Um, well, not him, that's like a bunch of slaves and political prisoners and stuff, but you know, he thought about it, which I mean, I guess in history books means that he did it, I don't know. <laughs> and he was in fact the first to rule a uh, unified ancient China after conquering the Warring States during the Warring States period when a bunch of states, um, you know, went to war with each other. Aren't you guys so glad that I'm doing this cultural context? Yeah, I am definitely not a Chinese historian. <laughs> Wendy comes down the stairs and recognizes Shen. I hope I'm saying his name right. I'm sorry if I'm not. She recognizes him in a picture of a bunch of Buddhist monks. What's this? It's Jinji Mountain Temple. It dates back over 1500 years. I couldn't find any info on Genji Temple, so it's probably fake. They're monks. Well, don't they have ponytails? Buddhist monks shave their heads. So you might not actually see Buddhist monks uh, wearing ponytails that often, but you might see uh, people in the Qing Dynasty, just general Chinese people in the Qing Dynasty, wearing super long ponytails because that was the custom and tradition at that time. Um, I believe it was has having something to do with it, it being your hair being a gift from your parents or something like that. Aren't you taking your cupcakes? No, you take them. But there's 500 of them. 500 cupcakes? Somebody better take cupcakes. I love that he's just chilling out in the tree. Like his balance is so good. He doesn't even have to like try. Okay, so how did they, did they not lock that house? I thought this was like LA or something. He comes back into the house and the grandmother who has found the protection medallion that he used to drive away the evil spirit comes in and they have a conversation in Chinese. I apologize, I don't know what dialect they're speaking. Okay, Tsai Jin is acting the hell out of this part. That's all I gotta say. Props. But the grandmother is really knowledgeable about Chinese history, so she understands that Wendy has like a really important warrior quest to fulfill. You must wear this! Let's go! He needs Wendy to wear the medallion for her own safety, but she doesn't know him, and so she just sees him like chasing her down as she's trying to get in the car to go to school, so naturally she kind of runs away. Oh, he's gonna steal this kid's bike! <laughs> Can you imagine seeing this just driving to work in the morning? Poor guy just goes flying into the bushes and they're like, we will never speak of this again. <laughs> the next day, Wendy's playing soccer against the mean girl rival and does this badass kick that just sends the soccer ball flying into her chest and she goes flying into the net. The dog, who is now possessed, goes to the principal's office. I know, I don't really know how he got all the way there either, but he does. And then the spirit jumps to the principal, so now the principal is uh, possessed. It's kind of like a game. Like the spirit just kind of moves around through all these people throughout the course of the movie. Wendy and Chen meet back up and she's like, I know you're not a real Buddhist monk because Buddhist monks shave their heads. Okay, so is nobody noticing this monk that they've never seen before just sitting on the bleachers, just watching a bunch of teenage girls? Buddhist monks shave their heads, so there. I was allowed to grow my hair so that I might fit in when I found you. Bald people exist outside of Buddhist temples. Like a lot of guys are bald. They let him grow his hair out because they thought that would make him stick out, but they didn't give him like street clothes to wear. You find you have skills you cannot explain. And he's like, look, I know that you know that you can do a bunch of really cool stuff that you don't know why you can do it. It's because you're an ancient warrior. And she doesn't really believe him, but she does know that he's correct. Every 90 years, the globe weakens, allowing him to break free and possess the bodies of mortals. So Yan Lo uh, was perhaps based off of the Buddhist and Hindu god of the underworld, uh, often called uh, Yama, I think. Uh, Yama might not be the ruler of the underworld and the, the dead in the way that we think of it. Um, there's like a lot of 
nuanced cultural uh, history and like religious texts and stuff like that that I don't really know about. So I'm not equipped, so moving on. The next day, she's trying to tell her two friends on the phone that Shen is his, her cousin. Tori, I told you, he's from China. It's not their custom to call first. Yeah, that's not really a cultural custom that I know of uh, to not call when you're coming from China to visit, um, unless you're escaping from it. And it is true that the Great Firewall of China doesn't allow people to contact you with non-Chinese messaging apps uh, without, you know, a VPN. And that's why this episode is brought to you by Surfshark VPN. We'll write, vote for Wendy on a bunch of chopsticks and get your cousin to hand them out at lunch tomorrow. Isn't it awesome? No. <laughs> that feels weirdly exploitative somehow. Okay, that's a little stereotypical, but hey, you know what? Do whatever it takes to win. You know, you can call my girl Windy Woo. Windy. Wait. Okay. You must wear this now. Please, go back to your temple of doom or whatever. I love Wendy's movie references. <laughs> the next night, the grandma takes the medallion and puts it on Wendy while she's sleeping and puts a blanket on Shen because he's sleeping out in the cold, poor guy. But then Wendy thinks that he's the one that snuck in and put the medallion on her, so she just throws it off the balcony at him. Ouch. Yeah, poor guy, it's like a projectile missile. Shen is not really able to keep a low profile because Wendy refuses to wear the medallion. Yeah, this is definitely not Southern California's. Those trees do not look like Southern California. Oh, and the spirit jumps again, this time to the history teacher. Evil is here! Those poor extras in the back just having to scoot by. Evil like, <laughs> they were given that cross and they have like no space. I don't think so. She started Mr. Tobias. Wendy's boyfriend hugs her in the hallway and then blames her when the teacher says they're, they're breaking PDA laws. I wanted to tell you I finally got a letter back from that modeling agency in San Francisco. They make all the boyfriends in Disney Channel stuff annoying on purpose, right? It's part of like the girl power thing, right? <laughs> Shin has gone into the girl's bathroom to... Wendy! I guess check to make sure there are no evil spirits in there and scared all the girls, so that's awkward. <laughs> but then Wendy is informed by the mean girl rival that she's gonna have to drop out of being homecoming queen because her grades have to be above a C and she's failing history. So Shen's like, I can help you with schoolwork if you wear the medallion and train. So then they have this uh, training montage to a very 2000s song. So this appears to be some form of Shaolin Kung Fu or Wushu in uh, Mandarin, uh, which is the oldest and uh, most popular style of Kung Fu. Uh, not sure which like sub style it is, um, but uh, you know, I'm not like too familiar with the nuances of each, but I'm pretty sure it's like a mixture of Southern and Northern Shaolin styles. I don't know. Now this you might recognize as Tai Chi, which is a martial art that is less combative and more about uh, being meditative for the control of your mind, body, and spirit. And that is known as Chip Fu, which is even less combative and less control of the mind, body, and spirit. Also known as Crisp Fu in the UK. Shen tells Wendy afterwards that all of the information she needs to pass her history class, she already knows because it's about Chinese history, and she is in fact a reincarnated, reincarnated <laughs> ancient Chinese spirit. You must focus your mind through meditation. So she just has to meditate and she'll be able to remember it. That weird trance thing you do going yum. Meditation isn't weird. It's a little difficult, but if you struggle with anxiety especially, very useful. So now there's this montage of <laughs> Wendy just meditating very diligently in all these different places and she does not care who sees her. <laughs> She's just like, I am not failing this test. I got an A! And she doesn't, she passes. So I know about uh, meditation being important for enlightenment in both uh, Buddhism and Hinduism, as well as uh, Taoist philosophy, but uh, is there like a belief in meditation for drawing from past incarnations? Like I, I genuinely do not know. And so she goes back to trying to avoid the training that she has to do. We'll finish this summer. Aya. Okay, every Asian person, or at least the Chinese people that I know of, uh, recognizes the aya sound. Do you ever miss China? Sometimes. She starts to ask her grandmother about China, and her grandmother tells her the story of the ancient warrior spirit that she happens to be. My favorite was about a girl who was trained by a young monk to fight evil. 
Okay, so Tsai Chin actually spent much of her adulthood studying and living in uh, London, UK, uh, hence the accent. Yeah, but Grandma, you don't really believe that stuff. Of course I believe it. So now her grandmother and Shen are like her accomplices that know about this whole thing. The rest of the family comes home to this like random guy that they don't know being there and they're like, oh. Why didn't you tell us that your grandnephew on your second cousin's father's side was visiting? Okay, I know it's a joke of him being like a distant relative and so they have all these extra words on it, but there's actually probably a word specifically for him uh, in Chinese because there's like a word for almost every single distant relative that you might have and you might have to remember it for family gatherings. Um, watch Off the Great Wall uh, video on the full family tree. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, a lot. Okay, no heads up. Dinner guest, staying over, all right. Please stay as long as you want. How long do you think that'll be? Ow! They roll with the punches though because they're very nice people. But he very quickly assimilates into the family. He starts helping the mom with her exhibit. One of my teachers at Jinji Temple is a direct descendant of Qin Shi Huangdi, the first emperor of the Qin dynasty. Okay, I mean like a long time ago, it's possible that I'm related to him as well. I'm probably related to Genghis Khan. That dude, that dude had a lot of kids. He starts teaching the brother a little bit of kung fu. Whoa! Whew, that gave me anxiety. He did that very close to that set table. I believe that Huang Di in Chan in English is monkey jumps over wall. Okay, so I don't really speak Mandarin, um, so I can't really be sure. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't mean monkey jumps over wall. Although, once again, my Mandarin is not good. I grew up speaking a little bit of Cantonese, but. Even then. However, there was an actual Ming Dynasty uh, general, I believe, whose name was uh, Cheng Wangqing, I, I believe, uh, who supposedly one of uh, the things he did was form one of the major styles of Tai Chi and invented an exercise known as push hands, which uh, has opponents basically in close quarters sort of pushing each other's hands, trying to throw each other off balance. Um, and the main goal of it is to sort of uh, use their force against them and not resist and throw them off balance by sort of redirecting the force, which might be more relevant uh, to avoiding tackles than trying to just flip over them. Um, but the flip does in fact look cooler in this scene. And then the grandmother brings out um, moon cakes, which Shen has made. What are moon cakes? A very special pastry that is made to celebrate the Chinese Autumn Moon Festival. So Mid-Autumn Festival generally does take place in mid-September, which is around the same time that homecomings in the United States would happen. It is actually arguably uh, just as important, if not more important, than Chinese New Year, uh, where people celebrate the autumnal equinox, uh, the mid-autumn uh, harvest, as well as uh, what they believe to be the brightest and strongest full moons of the year. So sort of think of it like uh, Chinese Thanksgiving and uh, the secular American Christmas all rolled into one. Uh, people typically eat mooncakes like they are here uh, during that time, which, uh, you know, it's sort of meant to traditionally celebrate uh, the uh, moon goddess of immortality, but now it's just great moons, mooncakes, uh, and uh, they taste they taste pretty good. The most common mooncakes are generally made uh, about, about that size, um, and uh, they're usually made out of like lotus seed uh, or some sort of sweet bean, sometimes with a duck egg in the center, I believe to symbolize the moon, I don't quite remember. Um, the ones they have are filled with uh, what appears to be uh, red bean, which is one of my favorite flavors. Also, mooncakes are super heavy and uh, they're often shared amongst many people in like little wedges, little slices. So I don't know how they're just like casually eating whole mooncakes. It's just like eating an entire birthday day cake to yourself, which I guess, you know, you could technically do and I've known some people who have done that. I had no idea these were a thing, but they look really good. Kenny, aren't you gonna have one? Oh, but the dad's too sad to eat his mooncake. That's sad. But how do you get the orange off your fingers? Suck them. Yo, so my boy Justin Chan here of Twilight fame and boys generally Asian. I mean, he also starred in and directed critically acclaimed movies. So, um, the range on this guy. <laughs> oh, ah, uh, I had empathy pain in my back. I hate that. Uh, and then Wendy uh, takes Shen out to buy clothes. 
There are shopping montages in so many movies. I think we've played this one out, guys. <laughs> Use a different trope. It was just when I saw these mooncakes, it was like I was a boy again. And then I felt guilty that I grew up turning my back on all this. Yeah, so this actually really hits home for me to uh, having been born and raised in Canada. I've participated in and absorbed uh, a lot of Canadian and North American culture. At the time, I just wanted to fit in, you know, as a kid and not having to think about Chinese language school or, or the customs and traditions that my parents had tried to pass on to me. But I guess that's always the case, right? You know, hindsight is twenty twenty, and we appreciate the moments our, um, our parents tried to uh, do things that we didn't really see at the time, but now we see value in, but uh, hey, I'm trying now, right? Am I, am I doing a good job? I don't know. My hair. It looks the same. I got highlights. No, it definitely looks exactly the same. He's gonna wreck it for us. People are starting to talk. So the boyfriend doesn't want her hanging out with who she, who he thinks is her cousin because it might cost them prom king and queen. Classy. We let him hang out with us. We might as well wait to buy our clothes on sale. Man, Austin's just the worst. And that sounds a little snobby. <laughs> Thank you. Dump his ass. And now all the girls have crushes on Shen because he's dress different. Like, it just kind of feels like the male version of girl takes off her glasses and everybody realizes she was attractive the whole time, you know? I've never worn anything except that stupid robe. Don't hate on the robe, I think it looks cool. This is good. What is the name of this taste? Chocolate. Well, don't they have it in China? I'm not sure. I've never come across it in my reincarnations. I don't know that much at all about Chinese culture, but I feel like the implication that they don't have chocolate at all is just, it just sounds categorically false. Maybe he's never had it because he's just always lived all his lives as a Buddhist monk and they don't eat chocolate? I don't know. That just feels like a weird detail that can't be true. But I could be wrong. <laughs> Since you like my chocolate cupcakes so much, I'll make you a bunch for your trip home when this big battle thing is over. I think there's still gonna be cupcakes left over. You made 500 and then you didn't bring any of them to school. Tell me about your girlfriends. Okay, so did she just ask a monk about his girlfriends? Uh, does she know what a monk is? My destiny is to perish during the battle. He just casually lets Wendy know that he's supposed to die when they go into the final battle because he always dies protecting her. That's how it works like every single cycle, which is depressing. They have a conversation about how her boyfriend Austin sucks and she needs to dump him. And then she's like, damn, you've only got a few more days to live? I'm gonna take you to a teen pool party, which in my experience, pool parties just make me want to cease to exist faster. Okay, yeah, that is very mid-2000s clothing. Shen's having fun though, he's dancing with this girl. Well, I'm your boyfriend, not him. Again, as far as this guy knows, that's her family, like long lost family from overseas. And he's just like, ditch him, I'm your boyfriend. <laughs> Of the heart. Yeah, you tell her, girl. Are you breaking up with me? I guess I am. She breaks up with him, though, so good for her. And then the girl kisses him on the cheek, which upsets Wendy, implying that she has feelings for Shen, which is awkward because if they ever start dating, they've now told everyone they know that he's her cousin, so... We're kind of together. I thought he was her cousin. Oh. Yikes. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, now one of the best friends is possessed by the evil spirit. And because she threw her protective medallion into the chip bowl. Yes. What kind of a chip is this? Which is very unsanitary, by the way. The, the spirit tries to take away all of her life force or power. It's never really explained, but it's, it's obviously not a good thing. But Shen jumps over the pool, kicks the orb thing out of her hands, and then Wendy kicks her into the pool and the, the orb, magical orb thing falls down with her. This is the biggest hot tub I've ever seen! And then everybody just thinks it's a cool like party trick and jumps into the pool and so they, they get out of there when nobody's looking. Corey, what are you doing? You are in my shoes! Yeah, everybody's jumping in with their shoes on. Just kick your shoes off at least. You're gonna walk around all squeaky afterwards. And now the spirit is officially possessing the mean girl. We knew we'd get here eventually. <laughs> so she's training in the park. Shen tells her that she's basically coming up on her final tests. So she's got these final lessons to learn uh, from these teachers. He takes out all these animal medallions. Wait, where's the dragon? 
Ooh, that is a very cool tattoo. Anyway, the medallions get changed into Buddhist monks that are there to teach her, and she doesn't want to beat up old people in the park. So Shen just goes around possessing her actual teachers from school, like her history teacher and her gym teacher and everybody, and essentially kidnaps them, allowing them to each take on a spirit of one of the Buddhist teachers to teach her. And so in this way, she goes through this epic training montage where she truly becomes probably like the best kung fu warrior in existence. Like she's really good by the end of this. <laughs> Uh, so this scene is a possible inspiration from Shaolin Soccer, uh, a great movie by uh, a wonderful uh, filmmaker from Hong Kong whose name is Stephen Chow. I almost forgot his name. Ow! Time for your final lesson. So this kind of staff fighting appears to be uh, more northern style, northern Chinese style, uh, northern Shaolin style rather, uh, of uh, guan fighting. Uh, and it's like more fluid uh, swinging motions as opposed to like direct hits, but I think it's direct hits as well, which is like the southern fi st uh, fighting style. Um, I didn't actually do that when I was learning martial arts as a kid. The Filipino style I learned was uh, our knees, uh, which is like sort of sticks that were like this long, but yeah. She now takes Shen to get a cappuccino, which he likes just as much as he likes chocolate. And then she gets a call that she has one homecoming queen. <laughs> She's very happy about it. So I mentioned that Brenda Song was actually a black belt in Taekwondo prior to filming this, but another thing I should mention is that uh, she was actually originally going to be cast as the like the Shen uh, monk sort of mentor character and had originally uh, written the character as a boy named Kenny Liu as opposed to Wendy Wu. However, they just couldn't find any young actors who could pull off comedy, drama, and physicality all at once. Uh, so at the end, they were just like, why don't we just hire the person that we already know can do all these things? And thus we have uh, Wendy Wu after they just rewrote the character as a girl. She tries to invite Shen to be her date now that she has broken up with her horrible boyfriend. And this is when it comes out that the final battle takes place at the exact same time as Homecoming, which she's very upset about. I was afraid you wouldn't train. So you lied to me instead. The spirit, who again is um, possessing the mean girl, is at the museum because apparently that's where the big showdown is happening. <laughs> Same. Yeah, so I'm not exactly a VFX whiz. I, I learned some of it in school, but um, you know, they, they could have composed that a little bit better, like blur out uh, the background a little bit or something like that, just to make sure it doesn't look like a green screen, like the edge feather on that could have been a little bit better. Um, you know, like having a good chroma key is, is never that easy, uh, especially when you have like a dress that's kind of like that, it's kind of see-through, but you could have done a little bit of something to make it a little bit more believable. She brings all the terracotta warriors to life. <laughs> Okay, so if this dude just ran away the first time, we wouldn't be in this situation. Or maybe we would, because it would still, like, demon possess other people. I don't know, man. And meanwhile, Wendy is getting ready for homecoming, because she would rather be homecoming queen than save the world. Her grandmother even brings her her great-grandmother's robe to wear in the fight, and she just isn't having any of it. You're my granddaughter, no matter what you do. And I've never questioned your choices. Patented guilt trip, but it is kind of justified because, like, literally evil will encompass the world if she doesn't go. Being a homecoming queen is all I ever wanted. Maybe it's just because I was homeschooled and I don't get the whole homecoming thing because I never got to go to one, but is it really more interesting to be homecoming queen than it is to be essentially a superhero? <laughs> I would rather be a superhero. Your yin warrior has betrayed you. So I guess Yan Lo decided it was a good idea to wear a dress in the fight. Uh, I guess maybe he's been watching uh, Jill Barrup videos on how to fight in a dress. I don't know. Shen tries to show up and fight the fight by himself, but obviously it's not going too well. <laughs> he's good, but he's not like a homecoming warrior or anything. I also cannot imagine how uncomfortable it might be to fight like for these stunt people to fight in those terracotta uh, costumes and stuff like that. I know it's not real terracotta probably, but like, it feels very uncomfortable. Okay, so I feel like in this scene, they just 
forgot that they had uh, hired a pyrotechnics specialist until filming the scene and they're like I don't know man just rig up a box with uh, some sparklers in it uh, and then have it explode and then someone's like why would it wooden crate filled with ancient artifacts explode upon impact. And they're like, shut up, that's why. And then on her way out the door, her teachers, who I guess are still possessed, show up and are like, you need to get your ass down there. Shen's about to die. And tell Shen I'm sorry. Maybe next time. There won't be a next time. He's gone to battle. Alone? I do think it's kind of cute that she didn't really care about saving the whole world. But as soon as she knew Shen was in trouble, she dropped everything. Anyway, she and the teacher show up. They save Shen. There's another epic choreographed fight sequence. Jessica? Why do you guys tell me it was her? I would have been here yesterday. About 10 minutes ago would have been nice too. She's like, all you had to say was that my arch rival was the bad guy. I would have kicked the crap out of her for free. <laughs> she's doing it in heels too. That is impressive. She looks fantastic in that dress, but I really do think she should have taken the robe from her grandma. <laughs> and then the grandma shows up with the robe and I guess everybody just kind of waits while she does a wardrobe change. Did she like change in full view of everyone or did she leave and then come back? Like that's a long time. I don't know what's going on here. Okay, so the five uh, animal fighting styles uh, were actually kind of based on the real Southern Shaolin Kung Fu fighting styles, uh, the inspiration of each animal influencing the uh, style uh, of the fighting, like a you know snake for flexibility, leopard for speed. They're still mostly aligned with the sort of traditional styles. You actually see this played out in an old movie by, uh, with Jack Chan called Spiritual Kung Fu, where he uh, plays a young student learning from the five spiritual animal kung fu masters. Uh, there are a whole bunch of uh, more animal fighting styles out there, uh, some of which you might have seen in Kung Fu Panda, like uh, Mantis style. She finally manages to hit the mean girl with a big ball of glowing energy, repel the evil spirit out of her. So when he just like Kamehameha uh, Yan Lo here, uh, this is sort of based on the idea of chi energy, uh, the spiritual energy that flows through living creatures. Uh, I think uh, it's sort of what the Force is based off of in Star Wars, you know, before midichlorians. It is traditionally believed that uh, the harnessing of chi energy uh, can bring healing, health, and uh, internal control of energies. Though the ability to uh, do what Wendy just did, I don't think is in very many traditional texts on that. Where am I? You better hurry if you're gonna get that crown. And then she relinquishes title of homecoming queen to her because she's decided that this is more important. I don't think this is over yet. But uh-oh, things just got a whole lot worse. I was wondering why I survived this time. Poor Shen's like, yeah, I was wondering how I haven't died yet. I always die. Let him go! But now Shen's really about to die and she's like, no, I rebuke that. She blasts the monster with an even more powerful ball of light and um, when she like saves Shen's life, she brings it back to life. I'm alive. You're alive. Aww. And so together, they defeat the evil spirit for good. The legend is over. How? True sacrifice for the world and a friend. The teachers tell them that the curse, the cycle of the, the monster coming back every 90 years is broken now. It will never come back. What about me? This will be your last life. Live it well. And Shen can stay. <laughs> and then the, the Buddhist spirits kind of leave them. And then all the teachers wake up and somehow the grandma manages to talk them down from just completely having a panic attack at the fact that they just blacked out for like a couple of days. But anyway. All on the way to my place for mooncakes. Let's get a cappuccino. And that's the end. It's really cute. So this movie, uh, which came out in 2006, was a bit of nostalgia for me. Uh, I first watched it when I was about 11 or 12 years old, uh, to about two years after it came out, and I really liked the movie. It was a combination of the Hong Kong martial arts movies I grew up on uh, and the Disney Channel stories that I was already watching. Uh, Brenda Song herself was a force to be re reckoned with uh, in this movie. Her comedy, dramatic, and physical acting chops were just 
great considering the fact that she was like 18 at the time this movie was filming. Also, did you know that she got into Harvard at like 16 and then turned it down because her dad suggested that her main passion of her acting career was already too successful to ignore? Like, that is the Asian parent that so many Asian kids wish they had. Anyway, the movie itself uh, was a movie that I just really enjoy as a Asian North American trying to still remember his family's cultural traditions while continuing to be a part of uh, Western culture and just participating in it. And of course it's fun to just see like martial arts and movies and fighting and stuff. Kind of reminds me of, uh, you know, when I was a kid doing martial arts. Anyway, thanks for having me Avery. And uh, happy mid-autumn festival, y'all. It's funny, we never actually see her go to homecoming. Uh, or see the mom's exhibit open for that matter, but you know what? It's still adorable. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I'd like to give an enormously huge thank you to Anton for being here and covering this with me. Um, it's been a lot of fun, so I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this as much as I've enjoyed making it. Um, let me know if you remember this movie. Did you watch this? I know I watched this movie a lot as a kid. But yeah, leave me a comment down below. Be sure to check out Anton's channel. If you're interested in filmmaking, videography, he's your guy, and he's really cool. So, uh, I'll link that down in the description box. But thank you for being here. Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing. Everything you do to support this channel means the absolute world to me, you guys. Seriously, if you're new here and you're a fan of nonsense, maybe consider sticking around. I post nonsense all the time. And remember, my name is Avery. I'm a YouTuber if you say so, because thanks to you guys, this is technically a YouTube channel. Bye!